Hey guys, welcome to this channel. In this video, I am going to talk about a very hot topic that's been in the air for the last week or so, and it is the log 4j or log 4 shell vulnerability. So, if you work in the field of like cyber security or a web developer or a some kind of some kind of software developer, you have likely heard about the log 4j vulnerability. So, in this video, I just wanted to give an overview of this vulnerability. What is log4j? Why it is so dangerous and all? So, all Java based applications that are connected to the internet worldwide, whether it's cloud based developer tool or IoT devices, which use this Java library log4j version 2 to version 2.14.1 all are vulnerable by this vulnerability means all the big companies whose application is based on java and if the application contain a login system which means that the application contain that vulnerable library log4j so who notifies that vulnerability first so a security researcher from one of the cloud security teams of alibaba group reported this vulnerability to the Apache Foundation who managed the library log4j and he told how dangerous this vulnerability can be and after that the Apache Foundation gave it a CVSS score of 10 that is most critical vulnerability. The big companies are at this time whether it is Google, Microsoft, IBM or Cisco everyone is vulnerable because of this vulnerability so now you can imagine for yourself how dangerous it can be so before knowing what is this vulnerability we have to know what is log 4j and know the meaning of one more word which is j and di first forget these two words for now because we have to understand one more basic thing first so let's say there is an application here and this application needs some data which is as follows and data like date, time, username, profile pic and there can be many more like this okay. Now here is a user who is using this application and this user needs some data every minute from this application. Sometimes it needs the date, sometimes it wants the username and sometimes it checks the profile pic for example. And like this, there are many other users who are doing this. So better than doing these things, again and again, we have made a system which is LDAP server, which is a basic server that can be anywhere. For now, I am explaining you only at the basic level so that all of you know what this thing is and how it's work. So now this LDAP server knows on which location which data is stored and helps user to find the data they want. Let's say the user wants the data of username XYZ. So when the user search this username in the application, then the application sends the user request to the LDAP server and then the LDAP server check for that username and if it is there then the LDAP server gives the data of that username. Now let's talk about JNDI which I had mentioned before. So JNDI stands for Java Naming and Directory Interface. Now let's see what it means. So in the simple word, JNDI helps transaction that happens between the application and the server. Such as the application is sending the request to the server, then the server is responding. JNDI is a plugin that was developed after a long time and it's used to transfer data between the application and the server. Again, I am explaining to you at the basic level. I know this can be understood in more detail but for now it's okay. 
So now let's talk about log 4j. What is log 4j? Log 4j is a Java framework or package used to do application login of Java applications. It has three basic components, loggers, appenders and layouts, which are used to serve the purpose of login in a systematic manner. So basically this is a system that will do log all the activities of the user. So where is the problem here? The problem is that also this log4j library has a J and DI plugin and from these things vulnerability was created which we know by the name of log4j vulnerability or log4j shell vulnerability. So what's the danger in that? Now let's suppose this app is being used by a hacker. So the hacker will input a payload in the input section of this app and then JNDI will pick up the data and then put it in the hacker server. Then the hacker server will send a mail form or non-standard response to log4j and then it will go to the application. After that the hacker can do many things with it and the biggest thing that hackers can do among all those things is RCE remote code execution. RCE remote code execution is the ability an attacker has to access someone else computing device and make changes no matter where the device is geo geographically located. So you can see why it is so dangerous. Now all of you will have a question whether we need to be afraid of this vulnerability or not. I don't think we need to be afraid of this vulnerability here because no hacker will target anyone like this individually. Whatever such attack happens, they usually happen on big companies and I don't think that attacking such an individual person will be beneficial for anyone. So now big companies are engaged in fixing this vulnerability. If any company is unable to fix it, then there is an official website of log4j where solutions are mentioned for like how to protect from cyber attacks and all. A complete list has been given on a repository of GitHub in which it is written which service is vulnerable and which is not. So we can say this vulnerability is the biggest zero day vulnerability of this weekend. I hope you all guys are now clear with this. That's it for this lecture. I'll see you in the next session. So if you found this video helpful, then like and share this video to your friend. Subscribe this channel for more technical video like this. Thank you for watching. Bye and have a nice day.